On episode 350 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Jillian Gertson and discuss her book, The Elephant in the Gym. You can find the full show notes for this episode at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 350. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness, the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. I'm your host, Alan Meisner. I'm an NSAM certified personal trainer with a specialization in corrective exercise and fitness nutrition. Let me be your coach as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. Our guest today is a health and fitness coach who wants you to ditch your diet and quit doing workouts you dread. With a degree in kinesiology and over 20 years of health coaching experience, her personalized lifestyle strategies have helped hundreds of clients redefine what fitness means to them and get lasting results they never dreamed of. Our guest today is Coach Jillian Gertson, and with no further ado, here is Jillian. Jillian, welcome to 40 Plus Fitness. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. What a delight. You know, the, the, your book, it's, it's called The Elephant in the Gym. And I had two thoughts when I first saw the title and I'm kind of like, okay, uh, one of these, I, 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 I kind of don't like the, the connotation and the, and the other one, I was like, that would, that would actually be a good book. And I'm yeah. glad you went with the good book route. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> you know, it, that was one of my biggest concerns when I came up with the title, I was trail running actually. And I came up with this title and like, Oh, we're having this conversation. It's like the, the elephant in the room that nobody's talking about. Hey, it's the elephant in the gym. And I was with my running mates and I said, and the first thing that comes up is like, well, am I the elephant in the gym? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course I was like, no, no. Oh gosh. The subtitle is going to have to be really clear that they are not the elephant in the gym. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I do want to talk to that for a moment because yeah. I, I think a lot of people are going to find this podcast probably in January when they're making these decisions and they're going to go yeah. into the gym and feel a little uncomfortable with it. Mm -hmm. The people in the gym other than the fact the gym gets really crowded in, in January. So the, the yeah. people that are there all the time might be a little frustrated that they have to wait on a machine they've never had to wait on, right. uh, but they want you in the gym. Yeah, They want the gym to be successful, the gym owner to be doing what they're doing and Absolutely. changing lives. And more than likely that that person you see over there by the weight rack that somewhat intimidates you at one point, they either walked in there as a scrawny 14 year old kid Mm -hmm. Or they came in there feeling like they mm -hmm. were an elephant and, and now they've done this hard work over a period of time and, mm -hmm. and they've changed. And, and, yeah. I, and I, so I would look at that. I would hope people going into the gym for the first time, and I know you feel intimidated and I know you want to run over and get on that treadmill, uh, fight that urge, yeah. get into the culture of the gym. It's a culture of change. It, it's, it's actually a culture of camaraderie. Yeah. Uh, the gym is a wonderful place to be. Once you kind of get over that hurdle and totally. you start getting comfortable in your own skin. Yeah. And really that's finding, not, so, sorry, really refining uh, the right gym for you, right? Like yeah. you might come into one facility and think, you know what, number one, we need to kind of, I think I would say, uh, you know, we're all so caught up in our own stories and our own head. We make these stories about what we think other people are thinking about us, but they're 99.9% .9 of the time wrong, <laughs> yeah. you know, because we actually are perceiving things that aren't there. Most people, when they see other people just getting started, they think, gosh, way to go. Good for them. I'm so glad to see more people coming in. And it's also, so it's one is get past that idea that we have in our head. But secondly, you know, um, just really finding a facility that really resonates with you and has a similar philosophy to you that you feel really welcomed in. You know, I was like to say that we, we want to find that cheers experience. You come in and everybody knows your name and you feel really welcomed. And it's that community and collaboration that you were talking about. And, and that happens. It's just, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time because when you first totally. walk in the gym, we, we kind of expect that you're only going to be there for three weeks <laughs> and then you're going to be gone. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, there, a lot of people aren't going to invest and, and people are not staring at you. They're just watching to make sure you don't do something to hurt yourself. Uh, mm, they've been yeah. there, done that. And yeah. uh, fortunately though, that's not what this book is about. No, it's not. <laughs> no, this is about the conversations that you, you have with yourself mm -hmm. 
and, and how we actually get in our own way. Amen. Sure do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so you start out in the early part in the book and you, you told this story um, of the two wolves. Mm, yeah. Would, would you mind sharing that? Because I, I really think that uh, if people can wrap their head around this story and remind themselves of this story on a regular basis, uh, th- this, this is going to solve a lot of problems. I agree. It's a beautiful story. It's a First Nations story for those of who aren't familiar with it. And as the story goes, you know, a grandfather is telling his grandson about a battle he has going on within himself. So there's two wolves, there's one good and there's one evil. And the grandson asks, you know, which one will win, grandfather? And he replies, the one I feed. So as the story goes, it's not really about eliminating the evil wolf. It's about nourishing the wolf you want to thrive. So if we take that metaphor into the health conversation, into how we treat ourselves, it's not about getting rid of the struggle. It's about nourishing the ways that we're being successful. It's about nourishing the ways we are building ourselves up. It's about nourishing what we need to grow, shift, and develop. So instead of fighting against that, instead of fighting against the things that aren't working, focusing on the things that are working, the wonderful things that we are already doing, because there's always some, you know, when I talk to clients, it's always, you know, that we tend to focus on the things we aren't doing instead of the things we are doing. And when I kind of reframe and turn people around to the, Hey, but tell me about what you are doing. What did you do this past week to help yourself, to move yourself forward to health And there's always way more things than they even realized. And once they see those, they're like, oh, hey, I actually did quite a bit for myself this week. Awesome. Let's build from there. And that's what creates more momentum and that kind of magical motivation that we all seek is that seeing that we're actually already doing things and you kind of get to build this develop belief in yourself, this self-efficacy, this self-confidence in your capabilities. Yeah, so I think when you're going through something, you need to take that, that slight step back mm. and say, is, is, is this a good wolf or a bad wolf? Right. More than likely, if you have a negative feeling, if you're feeling down, if you're not feeling good about yourself, you're probably feeding the bad wolf and it's mm-hmm. time to stop. So take yeah. that step back and say, okay, there's a reason why I'm not satisfied with what's going on with my life or going on with my health or going on with my fitness. You've got to take that step back and figure out what's the wolf I need to feed to move this thing forward. Absolutely. Yeah. Now you, you have a concept in the book that I really, really liked. And I think a lot of people will particularly, you know, again, we're we're getting close to January. So people (laughs) probably getting into that, that premise of thinking, well, I got to set a a resolution. And so I'm going to say, okay, I, you know, I'm going to go to a gym five days a week. And then, you know, I'm going to, you know, cut out processed foods and, um, you know, I don't know, uh, try to sleep eight hours a night. Yes. So they set these, these kind of these standards of, of what mm-hmm. they're going to do. And, and actually some of them work for about mm-hmm. three weeks, like sure. I said, about three weeks. And then they miss a day at the gym mm-hmm. and then that missing the day of the gym, they, they, mm-hmm. they feed the bad wolf mm-hmm. and they do say, well, I missed Thursday. I may as well just skip Friday. Right. So yeah. you have this concept called the health zone, which I think mm-hmm. is, is really going to set people into a really good state of mind to constantly be feeding the good wolf. Yeah, yeah. Can you talk about the health zone? Totally. So you really hit it on the head. It's really uh, why I developed the health zone was that I kept having these conversations with my clients about, you know, they'd, you know, map out this criteria for themselves, this very black and white, this very binary relationship with what they needed to do to, in their heads, be successful with their health, whether that was going to the gym three times a week, whether that was not eating processed foods, whatever, similar examples to what you were mentioning. And so, you know, what I noticed was when they made one choice that took them out of that very black and white, very binary criteria, they decided that they'd failed. And when they decided that they failed and you know, fed that evil wolf, then what ends up happening is then it's like this domino effect 
but not in the direction we want. <laughs> we, you know, skip the gym. So then we think, oh, today's kind of a write-off. I'm going to, you know, have an indulgent lunch. And then indulgent lunch leads to mid-afternoon coffee with a special treat, leads to drive through for dinner, leads to, you know, not getting to bed on time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and then start fresh tomorrow. And that domino effect really leads us down a path that's not really conducive to our health when all it was, was that we, we maybe needed to sleep in a little bit that morning and skip the gym. And one workout off doesn't mean, doesn't negate the two workouts that person had already done in the week. So the idea of the health zone, pardon me, was to get people out of that binary black and white thinking, was to really look at our lives and give ourselves more flexibility, more room, more grace to really live in a range of activities. So for example, if we had that quota, instead of having a quota of I'm going to exercise three days per week for this much time or whatever I'm going to do, saying instead, I'm going to move my body two to four days per week for a minimum of 15 minutes. And I'm going to be happy no matter where I fall in that range. And that no matter where I fall in that range, I'm actually still being successful. So it comes down to looking at that whole health range and thinking, you know, what are my, I I call them non-negotiables. So at the end, bottom of the range is this idea of the, what are the non-negotiable health habits I'm going to maintain no matter what? Think like brushing your teeth. No matter how busy we get, most of us, 90% of the time, brush our teeth twice a day. And we don't even really think about it. It's a health habit we maintain because we see the value in doing that. So what are the other health habits that we can maintain at the bottom end of that health zone to maintain no matter what and engage in feeling successful and feeding that good wolf? And then at the other end of the range would be like your optimal habits, not like the sunshine and rainbows optimal habits where you, it's not going to work with your actual real life, but what's going to work with your real life in, if things were moving along in a kind of swimming along in a, in a reasonable fashion, you know, no major bumps in life, but regular life, what would you be doing on the other end of that spectrum? And so finding that kind of range and no matter where you fall in that, feeling really successful about the choices you've made. Yeah. And, and the thing I like about, about this is one, right, if you're doing anything positive, even a small step in the right direction is, can make a huge difference over yes. time. Yeah. You know, we, we don't realize, okay, we were living, potentially living very, very unhealthy lives. And now we're not doing that anymore we're better. But if you Mm -hmm. kind of set this bar and say, I have to be at this level and you don't reach that, is that going to be the thing that knocks you off permanently? And so it's just the function of setting that bottom level and that top level, and then just trying to make sure that you have strategies in your life that keep you accountable and successful within that range. Yeah, totally. I always tell my clients, something is better than nothing. You know, it's a if, if you can even do 10 minutes of a workout and just go for a 10 minute walk, isn't that better than doing nothing? Like if we actually step back and objectively look at it, we're all going to go, well, of course, isn't two servings of vegetables better than none? Yeah, absolutely it is. So whatever one glass of water is better than no glasses of water or three is better than one, than two. Like, so all these steps in the right direction help us and Again, doing them consistently, of course, is what is a big, big clincher. So now with the book, um, The Elephant in the Gym, you you set 10, what you call super you principles, Mm -hmm. and then you have a chapter about each one. So Mm -hmm. uh, you have a lot of information about each one of these. So we can't dive deep, deep into each of these. But I would like, if you don't mind sharing the 10 and just kind of giving us a general overview uh, of of what that means in context to our, our health and fitness. Absolutely. So I really wanted a way to kind of wrap up each chapter. And it was kind of like, what's the key message I want you to walk away from this chapter with? So it's almost like it becomes, in essence, a summary of the book. So the first one is really about be you. You're unique. And so is your health is the principle. You know, and there's the big thing I always want people to take away is there's no other person on the planet that's exactly like you. So there's no one right way to be healthy either because everybody is different. We all have different genetics, interests, priorities, values. So we need to find the way that works for us and our lives. So that's the first one. 
The second one is to really embrace our humanity that it's really, there's this, there's unfortunately this misconception that there's a perfect out there that we have to be, if I just follow this program perfectly and I will do this and then I will be healthy, but it just doesn't work that way. So it's about a really focusing on being human, <laughs> embracing the fact that you are human and that you will ebb and you will flow and you will make mistakes. And that's about learning to give yourself some compassion in those moments and learning from those, those, those changes um, the third one is to show up, to really trust the process, whatever process you choose, and actually take action and, and move yourself forward. The fourth one is to unlock your potential. And that one's really about know, knowing and acknowledging that you are both your loudest critic and your biggest cheerleader. So you can choose, again, that's that evil wolf, good wolf. You can feed the loudest critic or you can be your biggest cheerleader. But part of that is just that mindfulness, becoming aware of where you're being very hard on yourself. And then how do you shift that tide? And then I talk about some really tangible strategies in that chapter. Uh, pa- number five is pa- practicing patience and perseverance. So one of the kind of guiding things in the fitness industry and in the health industry is everybody wants that quick fix. Mm-hmm. But quick doesn't usually equal sustainable unfortunately. (laughs) We all want that dramatic result, but the dramatic result usually requires extreme measures. And those are rarely sustainable in anybody's real life. So understanding that things will take time, change isn't easy. So be willing to kind of put the work in and acknowledge that it will be tough, that there will be a struggle and it's very human to struggle and that that's okay. The next one is to really explore the science and practice the art. So I come from a background of a degree in kinesiology, and I've done a lot of work and study over the years of the science of the physiology of exercise and and how do we be healthy. (laughs) And so there's a tremendous amount of science to all of this, to, to health and to fitness, and how you apply it in your life is an art. So I say explore the science, practice the art. So it's about acknowledging what the actual science is, not the pseudoscience, the actual science, and then really understanding how you apply it to your life is an art. The next one is to reclaim your relationship with food. Of course, I couldn't have a health book without an acknowledgement around the nutrition piece. Again, nutrition science, super complex topic. But I think we've overcomplicated it in a lot of ways. So I really talk about, I have 10 tips that I offer in that chapter to really reconnect to our relationship with food and really, I, I, we talk about, you know, fly the white flag and like really let's stop having this really intense battle with food, that f- food is what we need to nourish our souls, but also to nourish our bodies, but also to nourish our souls. And then yawning your way to success. Uh, um, The other piece that we often don't talk about in this health conversation is sleep and how truly I call it the unsung hero of health, that we need to really be, as a culture, shifting our conversation and really putting more value back to sleep because it's really huge. And I talk about the science behind that as well. And then the final one is own it. Your health, your fitness, and your life own that you're going to have a unique vision and then create that for yourself and create a plan and an approach to health and fitness that really feels good and grounded in your life right now as it is. And so that you can evolve and grow your health and wellness throughout the course of your life. Because what my health and wellness looked like when I was 20 is different than it looks like at 40. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And I think anyone that's hearing these principles, these super you principles that you're out there, that resonates with us. I mean, that's mm-hmm. that's the message that I've had on this podcast since mm-hmm. the beginning, um, almost three years ago. And uh, this is you know this is episode 350, so we've we've been having this conversation. Uh, so these principles I know are not new to us, but the base point is we we have to take that step back and kind of remind ourselves why we're doing this and what's going on. And each of these principles is kind of addressing a different part of our, both our, our our mental reflection of of our lives, mm-hmm. and then the actions that we take after we have made these decisions and we're we're, we're making these choices. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, I would say the first part of the book is really addressing 
kind of what you've been up against, all the struggle that we've been facing and what's really actually holding you back. And then the second half of the book is really about, okay, so now where do we go from here? Where do we go now that we've kind of become aware of this? We kind of, we see the elephant in the gym. Now, how do we address it? How do we move forward in a powerful and empowered way so that we feel like we are in the driver's seat in our own life and not feeling like we're looking outside of ourselves to someone else to tell us this magic solution that we're going to, if we just follow this magic solution that this individual with lots of likes on Facebook is going to, you know, tell me what to do and really putting the power back on on ourselves. It's like, I get to choose. Actually, it's up to me to choose what's going to work for me. Yes. Oh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, I do want to take one step kind of backwards because Mm -hmm. principles, and and you have all kinds of actionable tips. So I don't want anyone to think that this book is is just these this principles based. But the principles Mm -hmm. the principles are important. But Mm -hmm. you follow up each of the principles with some homework, some some things, action items, some things we need to do. Which again, I'm I'm very action oriented. Give me something and then show me, tell me what to yeah. do. And, and, and then you can pick and choose how you apply these things in your life. But it really kind of goes though, you got to take it back to this one seed. And the, and the one seed is that you have to have a desire to change. Yes. Because if, if you don't truly have the desire to change, then when you actually start going up against the, the work ahead of you, mm-hmm. and, and I, I know this might sound strange, but getting better sleep, it's mm-hmm. hard work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you it know, is. You, you, you got to say no to some things that you probably <laughs> don't want to say no to, like words with That's friends right. or Netflix. Yeah. It's time to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, because it's not going to be easy. I would love to say that it's easy, but it, it's never going to be completely easy. It, it gets easier, mm-hmm. but it's it never does. going to be easy. So with that hard work in front of us, can you talk a little bit about that thing we need, the desire to change and and how how we can embrace that. I think one of the pieces around that that I think I really want people to hear is that we have to choose our hard. That when you're feeling uncomfortable in your skin, when you're not happy with the level of health you currently have, when you feel like there's things you can't do with your body that you'd really like to do. The example I give in the book is you watch your child on a on a ride at Disneyland that you'd really like to be in, but you don't fit in the seat. My gosh, that is hard. And so it's really embracing the fact that that work is worth it because the alternative is hard too. So it's about choosing which hard you want to live with. Do you want to live with the hard of feeling uncomfortable in your skin, not feeling like your body is in its best shape for you, not being able to do the things you want to do, not feeling vibrant, vital, and alive, and able to live your life the way you want to live it? Or do you want to do make the other hard decision, which is to make a few sacrifices, to have to say no sometimes, to put yourself first, to kind of say yes to yourself and say no to others. I think that 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 is hard too, but understanding that the thing's going to push you through is really that reverence for the alternative, which is also hard. And knowing what's in it for you on the other side of hard, which what I talk about a lot is really connecting to not the how I want to look in my, in my body. How do I want to feel in my body? What's the why? What's in it for me to do this work and get past the hard? And that's really connecting to a really powerful, really deep, meaningful why. What's in it for you? Why do you want to do this? And peeling not just the, because I know I'll, my, I'll fit in my clothes. Well, that's nice to fit in your clothes if it's about weight loss or to be able to run a 10K. That's also great. But what's in it for you to be able to do those things? Yeah. With a lot of, I talk to a lot of moms and a lot of parents. For a lot of them, it's, I, I want to be a great role model for my kids. I don't want my kids to feel like this in their body. Okay, now we're talking. That's yeah. a more powerful and more motivating why. So when that alarm goes off in the morning and you want to stay in bed, but you know you should get up and go and do your workout or go for your walk or make time to make a healthy lunch you're going to think of that reason and it's going to give you the impetus you need to get out of bed and go and do it. Yes, yes. And part of what you're talking here, like I said, it does resonate with us. I've always talked about it in terms of what I call commitment. And that commitment is the combination of your your vision. What does a healthy, fit, and happy person, what does that mean to you Mm -hmm. personally? Because what it means to me is something entirely different. And when, when I get older, 
Uh, I've used the phrase, when I'm 105, I want to be able to wipe my own butt. Yes. Um, and, <laughs> and, and I say that because I, I know how many people get into their 70s, 80s, and 90s, and yes. they lose their independence. That's right. And, and I don't want to be that person. Mm-hmm. And, and I know I don't have to be that person because I have role models that I see that are, mm-hmm. you know, 80s, 90s, 100, well into their hundreds, still living active lifestyles. So I just know I need to do the things to do that. Now, today, you know, my, my vision is I not only want to enjoy time with my kids or what or grandkids when they come around, is mm-hmm. if one of them tells me they want to go do a Tough mutter, mm-hmm. I want to be able to go do that with them. That's right. Yes. And so it's not that I want to do a tough mutter for the sake of saying I did a tough mutter. I was like that when I was young and competitive. Yeah. Now <laughs> it's just, I don't want my daughter to be waiting on me. I want to yeah. finish the race with her and I want to enjoy myself and not hurt myself while I'm doing it. So I train that way. And uh, so that's your, that's your vision. And then the why mm-hmm. part is, yeah, it's, it's, it's the quality time with my family. It's, it's knowing totally. that um, if I want to be around, I've got to take care of myself. And so I put it to, in, in slightly different terms, but it, was, it yeah. was just funny as I went through the book, I kept seeing my words in your book. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love it when you find that. Yeah. But it, and it, which gives me so much hope because I think the more of us that are having these conversations, I see this I see the shift in the tides of the conversation around health and fitness. I see things shifting and it gives me a lot of hope because I think for a lot of years, it was kind of the blood, sweat and tears and look a certain way. And there's still a tremendous amount of that. And I still, I'm hearing more and more people having these conversations, more and more people saying, I just want to be able to wipe my butt when I'm 90. (laughs) You know, I want to be able to get down. One of the common ones I hear from my clients with grandkids, I want to get down on the floor and play with my grandkids. Or I want to be able to take them to the park and actively play with them. That's really empowering when you start talking about that vision as opposed to being able to look good in a bikini, which is kind of here nor there at the end of the day. Like, yeah. what did you do in your bikini? That's what I want to talk about. Like, <laughs> well, did you go surfing? Above. Did you like go play with your kids in the sand and feel fantastic? Because that's yeah. what your that's what the people in your life are going to remember. You know, nobody gets to their deathbed and thinks, "Gosh, I wish I'd looked better in a bikini." They think of all the things they did. They think of all of the relationships they had. Like, I think again, it's that step back. Like, what? What's important to me? What do I value? What, at the end of the day, what do I hold close to my heart? And that's the, that's the kind of the core message here. Cool. Cool. Now I'm, I'm introducing kind of a new, um, I guess I'll call it a segment for lack of, of better words to this show. I'd like to ask you, what are three strategies or tactics to get healthy, fit, and happy, which is what I define wellness. What are three of your strategies for wellness and strategies or tactics for wellness. Okay. So number one, before you embark on anything, the first thing that came comes to mind is like, are you willing to do this for the rest of your life? So if you're looking at like, I just got a message from a client earlier today and she was curious about a supplement. And I said, okay, you know, here's some, from a scientific perspective, here's some information about it, but I want you just to take a step back. If you take this supplement, are you willing to take it for the rest of your life? Is this something that that resonates with you and feels like it connects to you? You know, and trust your instincts around, is this something you want to do for the rest of your life? And if you if the answer to that is no, what's the point of doing it short term? Is this a sustainable thing I can do? So kind of trusting your instincts, really asking the questions before you kind of jump all in. So that's number one, is really listening to that. Number two, I really truly believe like whatever you choose to do around your health and fitness, do it and do it consistently. There is no magic pill. There is no magic solution or program. It's just the things we do with consistency that really add up to creating more impact in our lives and more change in our health. And then the third thing is to not 
judge failure. So when you fall off that blessed wagon, to not look at it as you failing, that's maybe if you fell off the wagon or you keep falling off the wagon, maybe you're just on the wrong track. Maybe you just need to find a different wagon to be on, (laughs) you know, and find a different way of doing things. So instead of the other analogy I like to use is before you wipe the slate clean, take a look at the chalk marks and really what can you learn from what you tried there and get up and try again you know it's the whole failure isn't falling failure is choosing not to get back up so it's get back up try again learn from what didn't work those are more higher level mental strategies not tactical strategies yeah absolutely and no that's that's totally cool that's exactly exactly what i think we needed to hear well if you haven't got it from me I, i love your message Thank you. If someone wanted to get in touch with you, learn more about the book, where would you like for me to send them? Yeah, they can head to, well, there's two places they could go. They could go to elephantinthegym.com, all one word, or they can head to superu, spelt out, superu.ca. So I have those two places that they could head. Okay. And they'll be able to find me in one of those. Excellent. This is going to be episode 350. So you can go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 350. And I'll be sure to have those links in the show notes. Jillian, thank you so much for being a part of 40 Plus Fitness. Oh, such a delight. Such a delight. I'm I'm brand new to the 40 Plus Club. And uh, I'm well, really welcome. happy to welcome. be here. I, you know, I... <laughs> I, so many of my friends were like nervous about turning 40 and I'm like, ah, oh, bring it on. I just feel like this is going to be the best, the best decades of our lives. It's great. Cool. I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I enjoyed having it. Jillian's a pretty special person, and her book, Elephant in the Gym, is just a really cool book. I love the cover. I love the concepts in the book. As I was reading the book, it really pretty much mirrored what we're doing here on this podcast and what I've done with the Wellness Roadmap. So uh, it was really nice to see that this conversation is really starting to make a good role, that we're more and more people are starting to recognize that the mindset that we take in into the gym, the mindset we take into the food choices, the mindset we take into all of our health choices really does drive how we're how successful we're going to be. And so Elephant in the Gym is a great book. I do encourage you to step out and get that. If you do enjoy the podcast, I want to ask you if you don't mind helping to support the podcast. A lot goes into making a podcast and putting it together. I pay for audio processing so I can get at least the most decent quality my voice will let me have. I pay for someone to do the transcripts of the show notes and put them out for show notes so that you have that available to you if you thought you misheard something, you can always go out to the show notes and and read it for yourself. So it's there. It's always going to be there on the website. I pay for hosting of those of that website. So, you know, again, that content is always available to you. All the back episodes are available to you through the website. Uh, and then I pay for audio uh, files to be stored. So there's a host for that. And then just all the other costs that go into the making of a podcast. It's a, it's a lot more than I thought when I first got started. I thought this would be a pretty cheap endeavor. You start looking at those, you know, $5 here, $10 there, $100 there. And after a while, you realize, okay, this is... This is a lot more expensive, and each of these episodes do cost a good bit to put out. Uh, I want to keep doing that, uh, and I'm just asking for a little support. A few dollars a a month is going to go a long way towards helping me cover the cost of the show and continue to work to improve it and invest in it and make it better. You can go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash Patreon. There's multiple levels of support you can provide there, some with some really, really cool add-ons and pluses that you'll get for being a part of the the podcast, for on the team and helping us get this podcast produced. So go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash Patreon, and that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash Patreon. And that will take you to the Patreon page where you'll be able to read about the benefits and the different things that you can get by being a part of the team. Um, I really do want you on my team. I think this podcast is a team sport. Uh, Fitness and health are a team sport, and we need to be in this together trying to get our message out there. uh, And I want you to be a part of that. So go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash Patreon. Thank you. Next time on the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet 
Jimmy and Christine Moore. Now, Jimmy's been on the show before, and he's one of our most prolific guests. He has tons of podcasts now. Even Christine has a podcast with him. You know, they're both a really cool couple. Of course, Jimmy is extremely knowledgeable, and their book is called Real Food Keto. And it's something I'm really, really digging. I just finished reading it now, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to this, having this conversation with Jimmy and Christine. And I know you're not going to want to miss it, so please do tune in next time. Until then, have a happy and healthy day.